You know, the good news about that is that Elon has a president that he lets run the company, and her name is Gwen Shotwell. Gwyn Shotwell is not only SpaceX's president and COO responsible for the company's day-to-day -day operations and growth, but also a gifted diplomat. She was instrumental in building a strong relationship between SpaceX and a major national agency, NASA, which resulted in many lucrative contracts. Additionally, she played a key role in resolving tensions between SpaceX and the FAA, helping to get Flight 6 launched sooner than ever. So how did she make that happen? Find out everything in today's episode. Many people think that politics is the main reason forcing the FAA to change its mind and no longer make it difficult for Flight 6's launch license. It's true, but not all. Clearly, the tension would continue to escalate if SpaceX's side doesn't have a deft move. Luckily, Gwyn Shotwell, with her skillful negotiation skills, has solved them all. It's safe to say Flight 6 will be one of the most special test flights that SpaceX Starship has done so far. It is set to take place on November 18th, and the launch window will open during the afternoon. This is the first time we have had a launch window open so late in the day instead of morning, as in previous test flights. The purpose is very clear. This will enable the ship to re-enter over the Indian Ocean in daylight, providing better conditions for visual observations. Conducting the landing in daylight provides better visual feedback regarding the condition of the spacecraft upon touchdown. This is especially important for assessing the heat shield and other components after re-entry, as it allows engineers to visually inspect how well they performed under flight conditions. Also new for Flight 6, SpaceX will be attempting an in-space burn using a single Raptor engine that they canceled in the third test flight. As a vital part of full reusability, can't help but mention the heat shield. Ahead of Flight 5, they conducted a series of changes including stripping off thousands of tiles, installing new articles, and introducing backup ablative. Although the system worked pretty well in protecting Ship 30, SpaceX wasn't entirely satisfied with it. In preparation for Flight 6, they go much further with new secondary thermal protection materials and remove entire sections of heat shield tiles on either side of the ship in locations being studied for catch-enabling hardware on future vehicles. That is about hardware. Of course, Starship will not be able to fly without regulatory approval. Unlike every other mission launch, this time around, SpaceX didn't need to hedge its bets on the timing of the launch based on regulatory approval. When the Federal Aviation Administration cleared the Flight 5 mission, they also approved the company's plan for Flight 6. The FAA determined the changes requested by SpaceX for Flight 6 are within the scope of what has been previously analyzed, the FAA wrote in an October 12th statement. Any modifications requested by SpaceX to the approved Flight 6 scope of operations may require further FAA evaluation. To some extent, Flight 6 will be a repetition of Flight 5, featuring another suborbital flight with a splashdown of the ship's upper stage in the Indian Ocean. If the November 18th launch date comes to reality, Turns out Starship will fly twice before the end of November. At the same time, SpaceX also sets a record for the rocket's fast turnaround with only one month and five days between two tests. To put it into perspective, let's look at the time between the previous flights. The gap between Flight 1 and 2 is the longest with seven months. After the explosion of the orbital launch mount on Flight 1, the FAA determined that to obtain new flight permits, SpaceX would have to take 63 corrective actions, 57 of which were promptly addressed. However, the mission's timeline continued to be pushed further due to waiting on additional environmental approval from the third party, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service remains pending. A month before Flight 2, SpaceX urged the FAA to ramp up its process at a hearing before the U.S. Subcommittee on Science and Space. Nevertheless, that seems not to work. Starship's following test flights, including Flight 3, 4, and 5, took from three to four months to launch despite SpaceX's effort to rapidly up its speed. It explains why Elon Musk and his rocket company multiple times blamed the bureaucracy for delaying Starship's progress and alleged the U.S. was stuck in a reality where it takes longer to do the government paperwork 
to license a rocket launch than it does to design and build the actual hardware. Tensions between the FAA and SpaceX had reached a boiling point before Flight 5, coinciding with the United States on the threshold of a U.S. presidential election. The U.S. federal agency delayed the fifth launch of Starship to late November rather than mid-September. The company said that the delay was not based on a new safety concern, but instead driven by superfluous environmental analysis. Furthermore, the FAA imposed a series of unreasonable financial penalties on the rocket company. For example, a $633,009 fine against SpaceX on September 17, 2024, for alleged violations of agency rules for two Falcon 9 launches in 2023. Presumably, Starship Flight 5 would still be stuck on the ground, further delaying the next flight. Flight 6, if not for this woman's voice. Yes, her name is Gwyn Shotwell, president and COO of SpaceX. Notably, despite inherently taking place quietly behind the scenes at SpaceX, she ultimately speaks out to defend the company and its space programs against unfounded accusations at a congressional hearing with the U.S. House Committee. But for sure, we want to continue to enhance regulatory efficiency so that regulation does not hold back technology and innovation. This is not an issue for our competitors overseas. It is an issue in the United States, less so in Texas. She hints at the sanctions that the U.S. federal agency has imposed on SpaceX, and even baseless arguments that FAA Administrator Mike Whitaker said during a September 24th hearing to defend Starship's licensing delay. Of course, the $100,000 fines are not a big deal for SpaceX. It looks like a heavy blow to the company instead. Whereas it is ramping up its progress towards the goal, Shotwell expressed concerns that government bureaucracy is hindering progress, especially as SpaceX strives to continue launching its massive Starship from South Texas, expand its Starlink satellite internet operations in Bastrop, and enhance engine testing at the McGregor site. We can build a rocket and get it prepared for launch faster than we can get the uh, bureaucracy to approve us to, to, to launch. Only by addressing these concerns can businesses thrive. As Shotwell stated, You will en probably enhance the regulatory environment, and there's just a caution that um, you really want to make sure that regulation doesn't impede progress. Then her hard work paid off. Starship Flight 5 launched on October 13th as expected, and the license to Flight 6 also came to the same time. In addition, previously at the satellite 2024's opening session, SpaceX's president and COO Gwyn Shotwell gave the details about SpaceX's plans. Shotwell outlined that SpaceX plans to commercialize Starlink satellite lasers later this year with the service first expected to be announced as part of the Polaris Dawn private crew mission of the SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft. Indeed, in a groundbreaking leap for space technology, the Polaris Dawn mission successfully tested Starlink's laser-powered internet in orbit. Astronauts aboard the mission in space accessed high-speed internet. On September 12th, Polaris Dawn made history with the first private spacewalk, followed by another groundbreaking feat in communications, sending a post on X directly from orbit using SpaceX's Starlink broadband satellites. Hello Earth, we are so grateful for all the support. Please enjoy two recent photos from our mission and stay tuned for our next message. Sent to you from space over a beam of Starlink laser light. Crew of Polaris Dawn. Additionally, the SpaceX executive shared that the firm plans to fly 148 Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy missions this year. According to her, she'd love to get Starship into orbit, deploying satellites, and recovered. Both stages fully recovered, with rapid turnaround on those stages as well. SpaceX would also love to double the customer base for Starlink and launch as many as seven Dragon missions by the end of 2024. As of November 7th, SpaceX has marked the 105th flight of a Falcon 9 rocket, two Falcon Heavies, and two Starships this year, totaling 109 launches. The company plans to launch around 40 more missions before the end of 2024. However, with only two months left in the year, they may not achieve this goal. Although the company presumably can't reach its initial goal of 148 launches, because of the recent conflicts with regulators, at least, it beats the 98 launches it performed in 2023. Moreover, it has made a name for itself through a series of important national missions. SpaceX was involved in the launch of NASA's Europa Clipper mission on October 14th, which is planned to investigate Jupiter's moon Europa 
for signs of life. Looking ahead, with Donald Trump winning the White House, SpaceX could accelerate its progress much faster into 2025. Who knows? So what do you think about the future of SpaceX and even its Starship program in the next year? Feel free to leave comments in the section below. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.